Hey guys, yeah, another inbox review. This time of an aircraft uh, that's uh, from the Eastern Bloc <clears throat> and actually was developed during the time of the uh, Iron Curtain, as it were. It's a well known um, transport that's still very much in use today. Um, it first flew in 1971 and was actually designed to replace the AN 12. Uh, and uh, it's been used in mostly Afghanistan and all around the world and it's actually been used on humanitarian flights as well um, and has a maximum capacity of about just over 92,000 pounds of cargo and can carry up to 100 troops on it as well um, it is of course the IL-76 um, it's still as I say it's still in use today in fact I'm going to get some aftermarket decals for this one um, <clears throat> to mark the uh, primary, the version that's used by Volga the Nipa, uh, which is one of the many cargo lines that operate it. Uh, so what we'll do, we'll turn the camera around and you can see the kit itself. And there it is. Um, a very iconic aircraft, uh, powered by four um, Soloviev uh, DK-30 KB turbofans. And... Uh, it's just such a distinctive looking Eastern Bloc aircraft, particularly with this sort of glazed nosing in, in, the, in there as well. And it's such a large aircraft. I've actually had a look at this kit beforehand and the wingspan on it is massive for 1144. Um, so it should really make a lovely basis for a uh, build and uh, a very added collection to my civil aircraft collection that I've got in the stash. Um, this came out around about, this kit itself came out around about, what, two, three years ago. Um, sold very, very well automatically, and I'm not surprised because the quality of the detail on the, this kit is absolutely beautiful, uh, including the cargo bay. So what we'll do, without further ado, we'll get on with the review itself. I mean, it's quite a sizable box, as you can see by the size of my hand here. Um, on the back of it, you've got the—I mean, you've got this iconic illustration of one carry uh, actually taking off from a Russian airfield, with a load of them lined up in the background there, as you can see. Uh, this is marking a version which is used in the Russian Air Force because um, obviously it's their primary transport aircraft and uh, uh, paratroop drop aircraft as well. Um, as I say, it was used a lot in Afghanistan. Um, in fact, one crew was actually uh, shot down, I think, uh, by the Taliban, and they managed to escape, and they managed to get back in their aircraft and fly back to uh, their home base. Uh, so uh, just shows you the sturdiness of the aircraft. And obviously it's equipped with 22mm cannons as well, unlike the civil version. So there you go. And it's got, got such a distinctive sound. Uh, when you see or hear it fly, in fact, <clears throat> I used to spot a lot of these at uh, Heathrow. <clears throat> Sadly, I haven't seen a lot of them lately. Um, but uh, they were used chiefly by Aeroflot. I don't know if they still use them at all. Uh, but as I say, a lot of the cargo lines in Russia use them, uh, such as Volga and Dnieper. Uh, so yeah, that's what the version I should be doing it in. And it's also uh, equipped to be a command aircraft as well as a uh, crop sprayer. So there you go, or a fire aircraft. Sorry, crop sprayer, I was wrong. It is used for fires as well. Uh, so you can get both those versions within the Zvezda range as well. So there you go. Anyway, without further ado, I'll stop waffling. We get on with the basis of the kit review. Um, on the back here, you've got an illustration of the actual model itself, which looks rather impressive, and the detail on it. As I say, look at that. I mean, in the actual access hatch up to the crew compartment, it's beautiful. And then obviously you've got the cargo bay detail there as well. So that's very nice. Now, if you want to get hold of one of these kits. Kit number on that is 7011. That's 7011. Okay. As is typical with Zvezda. Um, you've got a line of all their other products that you can see here, such as the A321, IL62, which I've got moustache, and obviously you've got the Blackjack Bomber. Um, so that's what I've got me on as well. Um, and around here you've got a little um, 
colour call out of the colours you'll need, um, not only in Humbrol but also in Tamiya paints, which is handy because that's the colours I tend to use. And then there's a display of the decal sheet itself. So there you go. Right, as is usual, it's an end, end box opening box with Vesda. You've got a large box inside. I'll just pop that on the side there, which again is just a bit similar to, hang on, if I lower the camera here, bear with me. There you go, that's better. Um, it's very similar to ICM, and that opens up. You've got all your details in there. Obviously, first off is your display sheet. And then you've got a one, two, three bags of sprues, as it were. And obviously, you've got your stand and your glazing underneath as well. So we'll just put those aside and guess what I forgot to do, go and get some scissors. So I'll be back in a minute guys, bear with me. We go, I'm back, don't worry about that. Prepared as always, not just lock the door so I don't get interrupted. Ah, now we have scissors in hand. <laughs> right, here you go. We got this in pamphlet form. You've got a little bit of a history about the aircraft, and um, obviously it's in Latin as well on the left hand side and in English on the right hand side. Illustration of the box art on the top there, and then obviously you've got the alternative versions of how you want it, this aircraft display. You can either have it with a ramp down, which is probably how I'm going to have it, uh, on the stand in flight, or have one in flight as it's landing with the undercarriage out. So there you go. Um, now, let's have a look inside. You've got a map of all your sprue trees here, so you can check that every part in the kit is there. And just below, you've got some little tips here of uh, how to use your tools, etc. And then, obviously, the first phase, as is always with a kit and model aircraft, <clears throat> you've got your cockpit section here, as you can see there. And then, there's all your color call outs as you go. Um, obviously, you fit down the seats, the control yoke, you've got the radio, radio stations for the um, engineer and the navigator which you can see there and obviously you've got a little hatch for entering the cabin so there you go and then you put the bulkhead down you put the control panel on um, and then the next stage i think is part of the sub assembly for the lower nose wheel i think and then obviously inside you've got the interior fittings for the cargo bay which go to the side wall of the fuselage which you can see there and on the opposite side as well and it's also giving you a guide to where put to put the holes for whatever is attached to the outer part of the fuselage then it's the assembly of the internal fixings and the floor of the cargo bay and obviously you've got the ramps there if you want to keep that open and Obviously, this is that's all assembled. It's actually connected to the front bulkhead uh, along with the cockpit, etc. And then, obviously, you fit the cockpit in uh, to the front of the fuselage, and that is then done. Uh, next stage, if we just turn the page, let's get this deck all out of the way, we're in there as well. Um, 
is the assembly of the Soloviev engines. Um, obviously you've got your compressor blade there with the outer ring that goes in and that goes to the back of the exhaust nozzle and the front compressor ring goes in as well and then put your engine halves together. Then add the exhaust nozzle and the outer nacelle or air inlet. <clears throat> And then obviously you put the interior fuselage fit uh, button up the um, fuselage halves along with the rear cargo roof, as you can see there, and the lower part, the um, fuselage bay, well, or undercarriage bay as it were. Uh, fit the bulkheads on either side of the undercarriage bay and front bulkheads or landing lights. Um, other lumps and bumps go on, including the canopy and the nose glazing and the nose. Um, and obviously you've got to put an indentation in there for the flap dispensers, I think, or I don't know what they are. And then the next section is the fitment of the wings that you can see there. Uh, put the elevators together and then obviously add them to the wings, include the outer wing fences. Engines go onto the wings, including the, oh, I don't know what these are. <sighs> All the, um, I don't know what these are, it's part of the, oh god, what's the name for them? I don't know, but they go on anyway, all your lumps and bumps go on the wing. That sounds good, doesn't it? <laughs> um, and then obviously you've got the engines which fit there along with the other parts of the elevators. So they go on there, and then obviously you've got the fitment of the rear tail gun. And the glazing which goes on, including the ECM pod. And then the fitment of the front tyre wheels. And obviously you put those together on the undercarriage main gear base. There we go, undercarriage legs are assembled. Next up is the assembly of the front nose wheel, which you can see there. And obviously you've got the fitment of the actual rear tail. That's the assembled out of that there. And then obviously you put your wheels under there if you want the undercarriage down, uh, including the ramps at the rear cargo bay, you fit the end nose gun on. And then obviously it's the fitment of the <coughs> crew hatches. And you can obviously have them closed or open. It's entirely up to you. And obviously you've got the airspeed indicator which go on the spine of the fuselage as well. Uh, then you've got the rear tail ramp. The assembly of that <clears throat> and I was, as you say you've got the option of having the rear tail ramp down and open which is probably what I will do or you can have it as um, in flight as though it's going to be dropping some troops with the rear tail open and on the stand as it were um, and then there's the fitment of the actual um, stand itself if you want to use that You've got the shaft dispensers at the side, which are assembled. They go onto the rear of the fuselage, as you can see there. And then you've got the rear lamp, uh, rear cargo bay ramps at the end there that are fitted. Um, and I think this is part of the pneumatic system, which goes to lower the back of the, or heighten the back of the cargo bay. I'm not quite sure. And then obviously you've got your stencil guide once you've painted it, the actual aircraft up, etc. Um, and obviously you've got your colour callouts on the far right hand side there, obviously in Tamiya, so there you go. Um, and then obviously colour callouts, the first one is of an aircraft of RA78796 of the 224 flight unit Russian Air Force. Next option is an IL-76 Red Marshal of the Aviation Skripko, which is the one illustrated on the box. Sixth Tent Flight Center for Combat and Flight Personnel Training, Soviet Air Forces. So there you go. And then the last version is of an IL-76 MO RA-78837 Marshal of the Aviation Skripko, Sixth Tent Flight Center for Combat and Flight Personnel Training, Royal Air, uh, Russian Air Force which is another variant you can do. So there you go, that's your three call outs. And next up, first thing we're gonna do is open the bags, as it were. So excuse the crinkling in the background. It's just while I open the bags and get the contents out. So I'm just gonna seal that now. 
Unfortunately, the trouble with Bezda is they haven't got any self-sealing bags in my eyes here. So there you go. But anyway, first out of the bag is the actual main wings themselves. And as you can see, they're quite wide, so it's just going to be quite a sizable aircraft in 1144. But the level of panel line detail on it is exquisite, as you can see there. So that will come up nicely with a wash and a bit of weathering. So that is beautifully done, especially with the elevators as well. Um, so yeah, that's going to look very effective. And obviously you've got your lower wings. And obviously all your sponsons go in there, as indicated. Again, lovely crisp detail there, which you can see along the wing here. Not an ounce of flash. There's a little bit of a mark there, but obviously once it's primed up, that's not really going to notice. But that's probably the mould process that it goes through. Again, very crisply detailed, beautifully done. So yeah, very impressed. Um, next up. This part of the tail, which you can see there again. So I'll get it into focus. Lovely panel on detail on that, so you get some nice weathering on it. And obviously it's part of the re internal cargo bay system there. And the rear shaft is, oh, I think it's part of the pneumatic um, mechanism uh, for the rear cargo bay, I'm not quite sure. And then obviously you've got your rear tail planes. Again, lovely panel line detail on there, as you can see. And that's the main part, the actual tail unit. So it's just going to look quite a sizable aircraft in 1144. Can you imagine how big it would be in 172nd? Wow. Obviously you've got your pneumatic um, sponsons here for the rear um, cargo bay, which pushes the aircraft down, the rear cargo deck down. You've even got the oxygen chambers here. So that's quite good. And that's your control panel. If I get it round the other way, that's part of the pneumatic system for the rear of the bulkhead of the cargo bay. So it's very well detailed, guys. Very well detailed indeed. Um, and I think, I'm not quite sure. This is part of the detail for the bulkhead on the cargo bay. Yeah, there's not a lot to it, but I suppose you could probably put some wires and stuff. Just do some research online and have a look. This is your tailplanes for your... Um, this is the elevators for your tailplane. That's your front um, wing air inlets. Right there. That's the bottom part of the undercarriage unit, I think. Or the IL-62. Again, nice panel line detail on there. Beautifully caught. And this is obviously part of your car. This is the cockpit. And obviously you've got all your foot pedals there. Etc. And again, on here with the elevators, you've got nice panel line detail. As you can see there. I can't get it into focus. I'm trying to get it to fit my camera. So, yeah, it's beautifully done. And again, on the elevators for the wings. Nicely done there. And the front part of the wings as well. Nicely done. Beautifully cool. I'm really I'm impressed with this. I feel like I mean, they are well known for their aircraft. Um, their armour mm, was a bit naff. But even that's improving now. Um, but they've always been known for their aircraft kits, that's that's for sure. Um, I'm just going to pop those back in the bag so I don't lose them. Right. There's nothing worse than you go to build a kit, you take everything out and then you find you've lost something off the screw. So if I, have, if I take something out and have a look at it, I'll always put it back in the bag. Back in there first. Right, this is going to be quite easy to do. Just bear with me a minute, guys. But so far, so good. It does look a lovely fit.
There we go, it's the engines. It's the lovely FDK 30 keys. Right, I'll only show you one of this bruise because you've got two. Um, there's your engine casings. Again, nice panel line detail there, guys. Beautifully represented. Very much to scale, which is nice. And I'm not sure if these are the rear or the front um, compressor blades, but again, look at the detail on them. There we go. And there you go. It's beautiful. Mind you, there is an aftermarket set you can get for this, so I may well invest in that just to enhance the detail a little bit more. But, uh, yeah, I think it's True Details do a set for this kit as well. So I may well look at investing in that next month. So, yeah. So I'm going to build this kit as of when. Um, it's going to look absolutely beautiful. And then obviously you've got your rear exhaust stubs there. And then there's the outer air inlets for your engines as well. So there you go. That's that one. And then we've got part of the wing sponsons, or elevator sponsons, which you can see here. And there's plenty of them. So again, the detail on them, if I can get them near the camera, is exquisite. Mind you, if you had the elevators down there, obviously I'd have to cut, cut along the line and improvise, but there you go. And again, there's your whip aerial, your um, airspeed indicators. It's part of the undercarriage units here. Again, nice level of detail on those as well. And then obviously there's your tyres. None of them, unfortunately, are weighted, so you're just going to have to get a little sanding block or hunt out some aftermarket. So yeah, very nicely done indeed. Quite impressed with the level of detail on this. I mean, especially with this sort of scale. So yeah, very nice indeed. So right, we'll put them all back in their bag. Final bag of sprues. There's a point in come. Oh yeah, they've got three sprues in the other ones right there with me again. Let's we'll just load this one up. Use large halves here as you can see again nice panel line detail on there not too harsh very much to scale beautifully molded there's not one ounce of flash as you can see there although there's a little bit of the edge here which you can see but I suppose that's part of the molding process you're gonna get a little bit here and there but it, the lines on this are very pleasing and uh, let's have a look at the interior yeah it's a little bit sparse uh, although there's some nice level of detail here unfortunately you've got some injection marks inside which is going to be a pain especially if you've got the cargo bay open so you're gonna to have to do a bit of sanding and filling there which is a shame that's the only thing that's letting this kit down a bit um, yeah, you've got it in amongst the ribs there as well. That's going to be pretty tricky. Yeah, it's not going to be easy. So, yeah, it might be a case you may have to sand everything down and just replace it with some um, Slater sprue. That might be a thought. So, yeah, that's a little bit of a letdown. Um, but there are some, for this scale, there's some nice detail in, inside. But, yeah, that's a bit disappointing, that. It really is. Oh, well. You can't have it all. So there you go. That's going to have to uh, get some work done on it. Um, and then obviously you've got the remaining sprue. You've got the lower part of the fuselage again here. Which is nicely detailed with the panel lines on it. Interior workings of the actual cargo bay. I think this is the actual roof as you can see here. Or is that the floor? I think that's the floor. Again, nice detail on there guys. 
nice indeed. And obviously you've got your side panels, which you got here. I might have to do a bit of research and uh, see what I can do. And as well with the extra uh, true detail set, I think there's a little bit there for the cargo bay. So yeah, that might sort of boost it a bit. There's obviously a rear tail gun unit, which you can see there is a little tiny bit of flash, but it's about the only one bit of flash I've come across. And there's part of the workings for the rear um, cargo bay there. And obviously you've got your side bulkheads as well. Which is nice and that's your undercarriage bay doors and there's a little bit of detail there for part of the roof racking system and that's your ramp there so yeah I don't know what that is is that an ECM pod I don't know um, there's your cargo bay doors well your hatch crew hatch doors there's a little bit of flash there but nothing you a little bit sad I can't get off so yeah, I'm quite impressed with that. You know, other than that, um, injection mold marks in the back, and there's obviously part of the rear cargo door there. So yeah, not bad, not bad at all. So yeah, I think this is going to make a lovely kit actually when it's built. Um, quite a sizable attraction on the um, display table, I would imagine. Anyway, so I've not actually seen one built yet. Um, hopefully if I do get to Telford this year, I might see one there, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, I think there's a Russian aircraft SIG there sometimes, so whether they're going to be there or not, I don't know. We shall see, that's if I get to go. It's a big if at the moment. But obviously I would very much like to be there this year because I've actually booked the week off um, that's running up to Telford, which I normally do every year. Uh, unfortunately last year for obvious reasons it was cancelled. Thankfully it's going ahead full steam this year. Right, let's put those parts back in the box in a minute. And obviously right here. Here's your aircraft stand if you want to use that. So, yeah, there you go, that's your aircraft stand. And then obviously you've got your clear parts. I'm not going to take this out of the bag. But, very nice and clear. I think you can get a mask set for this as well. So... Yeah, because I mean, trying to mask that yourself is going to be uh, quite an operation, especially on the nose glazing. But it does look nice and clear. So, yeah, I'm quite impressed with this kit overall. Um, I'm just going to put the screws back in the box. Obviously the last thing we're going to look at is the decal sheet and here it is. Um, this is obviously obvious markings and stencils that you got on there for a Russian Air Force um, aircraft. I'm going to do mine as a civil cargo one, uh, Volga Dnieper. So, yeah, I'll probably have to remove the guns, and that's interesting. You've actually got a decal for the rear door to the cabin. Mmm. So, so the quality of them, yeah, they're a bit shiny. They're a little bit thick. Um, so you might have to use some Microsoft Micro Set. I don't know what they're like to bed down as first the decals. Um, but... They seem pretty clear and pretty on register, so there you go. And then obviously you've got some other parts here, which go on the kit. That one, mm, there's a little bit of a mark here, but to, as I said, I'm not going to be using these, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, I'll just keep them as a spare source, I think, in case I get hold of another one and build it. So, yeah. But uh, overall, it's quite an impressive looking kit, although there are a few... The only thing that lets it down is the mould 
seen weld marks inside the interior of the fuselage and cargo bay, which is a little bit of a miss foresight on their part. But overall, in general, it does look as though it's going to be an impressive kit to build, and even on 144, it's quite an impressive display piece to go on your display bench actually or in your cabinet um i think you need quite a big cabinet for this one um but you know it is quite a big aircraft and as i say it's got some it's it's got some world records for carrying freight and troops and so forth so the russians don't do things by half but if you can get hold of one of these they do three examples as i said you do a command uh, actually let's put the camera back up they do a command version um, with a big dish on the back you know the circular dish and obviously they do the um, firefighting one uh, as well uh, but it's a big old kit for 144 um, so if you should get one of these, make sure you've got plenty of space. That's all I'll say. Um, mind you, I hate to think how big the money here it is. If, if that's about what, twice the size of that, wow. Um, I would be ambitious in getting that. <laughs> I think that was distributed by Ravel, though. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm impressed with it. I really am. It looks a lovely kit, and I should imagine it's quite... Um, quite a big kit even when it's built up especially with that wingspan wow so anyway we'll go back to me and uh, finish the video so there you have it guys that's the IL-76 by Zvezda um, as I say it does look an impressive kit um, I think that's a future build I'm going to be looking forward to um, so yeah go out and get one definitely if you're into that sort of market um, so here you go if you don't want to do it as a civil, you can do it as a military transport, that's fine. It's your choice at the end of the day, and it's your kit. Anyway, I'm going to finish on that note, uh, because we're running now at 32 minutes. So until the next time, stay safe, wear a mask if you're in enclosed bases, uh, be observant, and uh, look after yourselves out there. And uh, as I always say, get kit crazy, happy modelling, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers for now.